Our guest tonight is not a professional basketball player, but he looks great in a tank top. He's the host of Armchair Expert, the podcast, and host of Top Gear America 2. Season 2 premieres July 1st on Motor Trend Plus. Please welcome Dak Shepard. <laughs> Great, you look so handsome. You're Thank you. in a suit and everything. I never thought I'd see the day. Well, I doubt you would know this, but you're the only show that I wear a suit on to. Thank you. As just a you know, declaration of my love for you. Oh, well, that's really sweet. Yeah. That's very, very sweet. Well, you look quite dapper. You Thank do. you so much. You know, I this suit, there's a story behind this suit, which is I recently officiated friends' weddings. Oh, you did. Well, oh. wedding. Uh-huh. Uh, which you did as well. I've done that a couple yeah. times, yeah. You go online, by the time it loads, you're a minister. You get off the internet. Yeah. Uh, but my friend's Matt and Laura, and I thought, well, you know, I have this suit. It's the only suit I've gotten that's new in the last three years. I've also gained a tremendous amount of weight, as we've talked about. Not like most people gain weight, though. Uh, most people gained weight over COVID. It was fat. You yeah. gained nothing glutes. but muscle. Yes. Glutes and, and, and quads. Right. Um, <laughs> as if you you're so secretly... I feel like maybe you're secretly training for a, like the WWE or you're going to beat up the, the Paul brothers or something like that. First, yes and yes. Yes, yeah, okay. Also, I'm holding out that maybe Putin will be open to settling this thing in the octagon. Physically? Yeah. Oh, that would, I would be great. Uh, if you're watching Vladimir Putin, <laughs> I'm going to take you out. <laughs> yeah. That would be the greatest resolution possible. I want to ask you a sincere question. Yeah, okay, go it's ahead. It's well known about him that he was a judo champ, right? You know this about him? Yeah, I've seen his judo, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you've seen him ride a horse, you've uh -huh. seen him work out. Who would your money be on? Oh, there's no question it would I'd be on him. I'd kill him, right? You'd kill him. Yeah, I, I thought think, so. I think you could beat him and his brother. Uh, he's got a brother. I don't know, but I'm sure if he yeah. did, yeah. You Wheel him out. I'll take yeah. them both out in the cage. <laughs> We'll raise money for something. I'll do it for charity. Uh, but anyways, back to this lovely episode I officiated. Yes. Oh, yeah, back After to the wedding. killing Putin. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so they, you know, they, they're, they're lovely. Matt and Laura, she's a, a tremendous writer. He's a very famous hairstylist. And so as the wedding was approaching, I started getting these texts that were a little curious because they knew I was going to be writing the whole ceremony. And the first one was like, Hey, um, just wanted to double check. You're not going to say that you're an atheist during the ceremony, are you? <laughs> really? And I thought, where would that fit in? Like, where? <laughs> how would I work that in? And then I was like, well, no, I'm going to keep my beliefs to myself. It's about you, blah, blah, blah. Then the, then the next text, like maybe four days later, was like, other thing, like, you're not going to bring up that Matt's been married before, are you? <laughs> and I said... How would I roll this out? Like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm an atheist. If there was a God, he would have definitely helped Matt keep that first marriage together. <laughs> but alas, there isn't one, and here we are. Uh, it's weird, because <laughs> it makes you maybe wonder. I've had this situation, too, where people ask me to do it, and then they're kind of, like, nervous, and you go, well, why did you ask me to do this? Well, I'll tell you. Their first thought is, like, let's get a comedian in there. He'll keep it light, he'll keep it fun. Uh -huh. But then you're laying in bed, and you're like, what kind of jokes is he going to make? Like, right. Is he going to be... Popping off Is about, it going to be know, a roast? Uh, yeah. Going How to did hell it after go? death? Or? Did it go okay? It was beautiful. It was really beautiful. I, I can say sincerely, um, I guess I underestimated what it feels like to stand in the triangle of two people doing that. Right, like, did yeah. you have that? Yeah. Where it's just like, oh, my God, I get to be a part of this, really. So it was that part was beautiful. For me, the weird part was when I continued that triangle into the bedroom later in the <laughs> evening. Right, right, right. They Weird found for who, that. though? To be him, I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm sure it was very natural for you. Uh, well, I'll tell you, though, this is how I think it went well, is that in all sincerity, after uh, the, the nuptials, we're at the kind of mixer afterwards, and an aunt from Canada who doesn't know me from a hot rock, she came up to me and she goes, that was a beautiful ceremony. And I go, oh, thank you so much. And she goes, you should, you know, you should think about, you know, doing something like... She was hinting that I should get into show business. <laughs> That's what, like, she was... I was like, oh, like, um, like I should do something kind of in front of a camera or something. Like, yes, a, you should do that. What a great combination compliment and insult that is. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> it's a double whammy. Yeah. That's a glass half full in my, my, from my perspective. People who know you know that you are from the Detroit area. Yeah. You are. Were you like a big Pistons fan in the eight, the Bad Boys? Yes. I was yeah. a, a, a huge Bad Boys fan because I was in seventh and eighth grade, the two back-to-back -back championships. Oh. And it did it ever occur to you that there's no goofier nickname than Bad Boys? <laughs> In my adulthood, yes, yeah. later. And when yeah. you play the celebration tape of them and they're going, bad boys, bad boy, everyone's out of sync. Yeah. It's, it sounds really weird. <laughs> now the show's so popular, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? You right. Makes you wonder why weren't, they weren't singing that song. It, it does, because that Cops was on back then, right? But, but you gotta remember, this was, and you do remember, this was a much different era of basketball. So we would go to Boston to play the Celtics at the height of the bad boys, and Lambeer would go up you know, to shoot and, and, and deserved. Soon as he'd go up, Parrish would start swinging on him and then Lampier would be hitting him in the side and they'd blow a whistle and they'd be like, jump ball! Like, you could beat the hell out yeah, of you. You could be in a fist to... fight on every end of the, the court. You remember Magic and Isaiah Thomas were like best friends and Magic clotheslined him. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It was a different game. Yeah. You had Vinny Johnson, the microwave. He was our three-point oh, yeah, shooter. Oh, yeah, Vinny Johnson. He was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. <laughs> so you just do the math on those two years, that championship. 20, 30,000 cigarettes he put back <laughs> in those winning years. That's, you don't see that anymore. It seems like he should have had a different nickname yeah. than the microwave. Yeah. Man. The car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Vinny the Ashtray Johnson. Well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to see a clip of Dax Shepard driving very, very fast on his show, Top Gear America. We'll be right back with Dax. Holy crap. Oh, wow. <laughs> That is fast. That's Dak Shepard, Top Gear America, season two. What does it feel like to drive almost 200 miles an hour? Well, I'll say in two things. One, it, it was a two-lane road. You know, it wasn't like a racetrack or a highway. It was a two-lane road that was like this. It was bumpy. It was really bumpy, and then that car, to get it to go as fast as it'll go, you have to put down all the spoilers, everything that provides downforce. So every time I would hit like a dip at 190, the car would lift, and then it'd come back down to the ground. And I have to say, it was the, the, the sketchiest thing I've ever done. I then went in a, we had a different car out there, a Bugatti. Uh -huh. Drove that one at 205, I would have smoked a cigarette and had a cocktail driving. Really? But that car, with everything shut off, was it was terrifying. Wow. Yeah. Well, you're like um, Top Gun Maverick hitting the 200 oh, mark. speaking of which, have you seen it? Oh, yeah, it's good, yeah. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be good. We'll plug another movie no, in your appearance. No, forget Top Gear. <laughs> Throw that out of your mind. Forget 194. Let's talk about Mach 10. That's what Maverick does. Let's talk about 10.8 Gs. That's what he pulls. Okay? This man, Tom Cruise, Top Cruise, he's going to single-handedly save the movie business. He's going to do it. And the American military, yes. Everything! Guys are enlisting on their way to the cinema. Mike, yeah, what a right. guy! I had this very conversation with some guys last night. It was just like... Yeah, it's, oh yeah, right. That's what it was like when America was fun. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, it's a perfect movie. <laughs> I haven't had that much fun in a movie theater since I saw The Matrix, maybe. 20, Is that right? 20 plus years. Wow. At the Man's Chinese, 16,000 people in there, no masks, let's party, people coughing, sneezing, screaming, cheering. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man, let's blow it out! <laughs> and when he does that thing, his patented movie, puts the brakes on, yeah. he goes up. Oh, I can yeah. watch him put the brakes on a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> it does not get old. The shirt with the scene with all the dudes playing football shirtless, but with two balls, who knows what's happening? Yeah, yeah. Who cares? Oh, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there. <laughs> Do you ever go like to Lakers games and sit in the front and do that whole thing? Yes. Uh, in fact, I had, a, I had a really incredible experience. I had been famous for like 30 seconds. This is like 18 years ago. When you were on Punk. When I was on Punk, and okay. my agent, to be nice, he invited me to sit in the courtside seats, which the agency has. And these seats are the, the first four seats after the Lakers bench ends. So it's, you know, the Lakers and me. Mm -hmm. And so... <laughs> It's wild, because you're like, feel like you're watching TV, but they're right there, you could touch them. There was a moment where Kobe Bryant called a timeout, because he was unhappy with what was happening on defense, and he gets back, and the huddle is right here. You know, actually, the huddle's right here, and I'm watching, and Kobe's like, 
Derek, you gotta get back on D. You're not covering him. You gotta go. I'll be on the. Oh, man, you a funny. <laughs> <laughs> to you. Wow. In the middle of mid rally speech. By the way, I just ripped something in my outfit. Did you? Did you? Oh, the new <laughs> suit. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Maybe you shouldn't be working out so much. Maybe this is a sign from the Lord. I almost halted this this thing. Yeah. But he did. He, he broke his speech and he came in and then he he went back immediately to the, you do this and you do that. And I looked at my agent, I'm like, I'm on the Lakers. <laughs> like if two or more guys get injured, they're putting me in this game. It was incredible. It'll that's never, pretty crazy. It'll never be topped. Yeah, that's amazing. And yeah. it's funny how like, you know, they can just shift th from this right back to that. He might have thought, I mean, this was 2004. He might have thought I was Sean William Scott. <laughs> he might have thought I was Zach Braff. We, and who knows who he thought I was? <laughs> Whoever it was, it was a Fair. funny guy. He that's loved for the sure. guy who he thought I was. <laughs> that's clear. That's what's most important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's always a pleasure to see you. How many how many cars do you have right now? How many? It's just too many. Too many. Yeah. More it's than ten? The, uh, yeah, more than ten. Uh, how many are on your lawn right now, on your driveway? Oh, like seven. The good news is four or five of them are always broken. So <laughs> four or five of them are always gone in some shop somewhere around LA. So that's the only good. Well, it's upside. very good to see you. Uh, Dax has got Top Gear America season two premieres July 1st on Motor Trend Plus and the Armchair Expert podcast. And um, Dax would like you to go see Top Gun, even though he's not in it. Forget the podcast, <laughs> screw Top Gear, get over to Top Gun. <laughs> we'll be right back to play God's basketball.